All right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. This is Anthony Smoke. And check me out on anthonysmoke.com. Definitely subscribe to me here on YouTube today. I'm in Power BI. I've got a little dashboard here. Um, this is a dashboard that a um, uh, you could say maybe an internal auditor would use to keep track of uh, their controls and their gaps, right? So think of a control as a process to achieve a goal or to minimize a risk, and a gap is a flaw in that process, right? Typically found by an auditor. So if you look at this uh, dashboard here, you can see I've got 10 controls. Uh, control, it's uh, one through 10. And I can see that there are 62 gaps, but my control three here has 20 gaps. So whatever control is in place um, here, whatever this process is, it's got a lot of gaps. So someone has to do uh, a lot of work to, uh, to clean that up. And I can, I can slice this by, uh, I can just show a control number. If I select on the control number right here, uh, I get the breakdown. Uh, there are four gaps that are complete, uh, 14 that need to be remedied and two that are on hold. So that's what makes up that 20 number right there. If I wanted to break it down by a, a control uh, owner, I could pick someone. Uh, let's go with uh, Floria here. And I can see that she's responsible for two controls and they have uh, seven gaps, right? And so I'm just getting tabled uh, is that a word tableized information over here for uh, for our fictitious company so this is not real data these aren't real names um, but you could say it's it's based on a true story and so what I want to show you is um, you know in maybe in the real data set uh, I had more than 10 controls let's say I got a hundred controls but I don't want to see all 100 I want to uh, use a parameter here to show uh, top control so if I let's say uh, pick the top one right boom it just shows me the top uh, control with the most gaps right if I go to two right you get you get the point three now if I go to four Wait, no, that works. Five, sorry. Uh, you'll see that these three controls have uh, the same number of, of gaps, so they're treated as uh, number five, right? So, so again, this is real handy. You can do this. Um, there's a shortcut way to do this, but not with a parameter. So if I were to go over here and select uh, my gap count by control, if I come in here, um, I can say, where is it here? If I go to this, if I expand this and uncheck this, um, instead of basic filtering, I can do top in. And if I put in top, let's say three, and I go over here um, to my yeah total gap count and drag that in value, top three by value and apply the filter, you'll see I get three here right but I can't control that with uh, with a parameter I can hard code that in so that's not necessarily something that uh, that I want to do I want to be able to control that with my with my parameter so so how do we do something uh, like this so the first thing that we want to do right let's create a, a new measure and you know how to do that you just click on a new measure here and you'll see I have uh, I, I created tables where I throw all my calculations into, right? So I create a calculations table right here. You can go new table, name it calculations, and you can put all your calculations in here so they don't uh, uh, get uh, mixed up with your true imported data, right? So we're going to create, this is a created table here. We're going to create a measure called uh, top n. And in this top n, I use this function generate series. All that does is let me generate a number from 0 to 10 by an interval of 1, right? That's, that's all that does. So that gives me a value 0 to 10 by an interval of 1. And what I would do is I would apply that to a slicer here. So we can, uh, we can build that uh, slicer if we want to. So let me hit the, the slicer, right? Let's just move it in here, fit it in. We're just doing formatting at this point, right? All right, so we're gonna drag uh, top end to the slicer field value. So this is my top end. Right, and we're going to drag that to the uh, the slicer field value. You'll see I get this nice little slider here, which is uh, which is pretty cool. And uh, I'm going to take the uh, the slicer right 
all the options. That's uh, the thing about Power BI. I just have to know where all these options are. So I'm going to turn my slicer header off, but I want to turn my title on, and I want to name my title uh, Top End Gaps by Control. So we'll say Top End Gaps by Control. All right? Okay, so that shows up there. Great. And for the title background, well, let's make let's make sure this is uh, this is white. Yeah, it won't show now. But in the background, I can turn that on, right? And let's see, background. Is this the right one? No, not this one. See, this is this is what I'm talking about. Let's turn that off. Let's go back in the title. There's a title background color. Yes, that's what I want. So let's just make that black perfect. Right, the font color is white. That should work. Let's make the text size 11. Now you'll see, you'll see I get that same kind of formatting, right? I could have just selected this and, you know, format painter and, and it would have uh, done the same thing, but I wanted to show you uh, how, how we get to this. So uh, back here, same deal here. Let's go in here. Let's go to numeric inputs real quick and let's change the background to um, some sort of gray here and the font color to white. So now um, when I, well, not yet, I have to assign this. Okay, I did assign it with the top end. So if I move this, yes, you'll see, boom. I get numbers here, right? Great. They change. It's not affecting our uh, our chart yet because we haven't put in the necessary values, but this is all I wanted, a slicer that gives me 0 to 10, right? Perfect. So now uh, we have to create another measure, right? So let's see right here. I have that created already. This is the um, uh, top end. Uh, where are we at in calculations? Sorry, in my calculations, I have a top end controls with gaps, right? So let's just pull that up. Now, don't be intimidated. It's really like 10 lines of code, but I wanted to comment it to make it easy to understand. So this top end controls with gaps, right? This is going to, um, or we're going to create that, right? And this is going to rank my total gap count by the dimension, which is control number. So in English, right, uh, for example, I have control number three. It has a gap count of 20, which means it will be assigned a rank of one, right? I want to assign uh, my control number a rank uh, based upon its gap count, right? So because it has the most... Uh, uh, controls or, or gaps, sorry, it gets a rank of one. So, so how do we do that? So the first thing you'll do, and I got to give a shout out to uh, um, the Power BI community. Um, I've based this code upon code uh, submitted by a user named Gilbert Q. So, so shout out to him. Got to give props. Um, so anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable that holds the value from our slicer, right? We created that top in measure, and we want to put that into a variable that we're going to use down below, right? Create variable that holds the value from the slicer. Now we're going to return this return. All that says is this defines the expression to return as a result. So put the return, and then you put your expression below it, right? Uh, you know about the switch function. It acts as a um, it acts as a case statement, right? That's the that's the best way that I can uh, tell you, right? It's a nice kind of instead of using multiple ifs, I can use a switch statement. Now the switch statement is checking for a value of true in uh, these next two tests here, right? So uh, Test one, if selected top, right, which is our variable that holds the value from the slicer, right? So if the, va if the value from the slicer is zero, then just show, then return all the values, just show total gap count. What that's going to do is it's going to, it's not going to uh, filter anything out. It's just going to show all values, all controls essentially. And then, um, if, if this does not evaluate to true, if this is not zero, then we get into this next piece, right? This You can consider this text two right here. Um, what we're saying is we want to assign a rank to all of the controls based upon the total gap count. So for all my controls, there's an associated gap count. I want to assign a rank, 
right? And this this all selected just kind of mitigates the effect of filters, right? Just take the, the the total controls that I have in the in my table gap analysis and assign everything a rank based upon total gap count, right? Now, if that if those values are less than or equal to, right? Um, my my slicer value, in essence, the variable I created holds a slicer value. Um, for all of those controls that are less than um, selected top, those are the ones that are going to be returned, right? And so your last uh, uh, value here, total gap count, all that's saying is return all the values um, if, if we don't know what the input value is. It's like the default. By default, just, just show uh, everything, total gap count. So if you understood that and you can apply that to your specific need, uh, what we can do once we have that created, we can go into the gap count by control, right? Now I'm going to add uh, in here. This is kind of kind of pre-created, but I'm going to add the control number to the axis. So this is my kind of unique uh, value, so to speak, or identifier. Uh, where is my control number? It's in here, control number. And I'm going to add that uh, to the axis, which I've already done. All right, so that's good news. <laughs> now I'm going to take the total gap count. That's the measure that I just walked you through. We're going to add that to the value of the chart, right? So our total gap count, total, or sorry, top in controls with gap. Oh, no, sorry. Total gap count, right? We're going to add that to uh, the measure uh, value here, right? So boom. So that shows up. Great. That's total gap count. That's and then now our top end controls with gaps. That's what we just created. Sorry, our top end controls with gaps. Um, we're gonna add that as a filter. So our top end controls with gaps, right? Is is there as a filter? And we want to make sure. When I look at that, I want to make sure the value is greater than zero. Okay, so that's the that is the uh, uh, the function or sorry the measure that we just created we want to make sure that's greater than zero and now when I move my zero right when I change this you'll see it is indeed filtering as we expected so that is good news so this is a real handy uh, tip to use again if you have a bar chart and it has hundreds of values or just more that can, you can show on the screen. Use a parameterized uh, way to filter instead of just hard coding a value uh, on the chart. So uh, this has been Anthony Smoke. Hope you enjoyed this tip. Get out there, do some great things with your data. Thanks for watching, everyone.